In this short tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to interface a motion detector with the Raspberry Pi. This video builds on my two previous LCD display videos, so I recommend you watch them first. This is the HCSR501 motion detector. It's a passive infrared or PIR sensor, which measures changes in the amount of infrared light radiating from objects in its field of view. It's inexpensive and very easy to connect to the Raspberry Pi. There are two pots to adjust timing and sensitivity, a jumper to set the reset trigger, and a 3-pin header for power and the output. The sensor can be powered directly from the Pi's 5-volt pin, and the output is 3.3 volts, which can safely be connected to any of the Pi's GPIO pins. The output on the HCSR501 acts similarly to an on-off switch. When there's no motion, the output is 0 volts. Then when motion is detected, the output rises to 3.3 volts for a couple seconds depending on the setting of the timing pot. When the output is connected to a GPIO pin, the pin will read low or false when there's no motion, and high or true when there is motion. The sensor has three pins that need to be connected. The VCC will connect to one of the Pi's 5 volt pins, and the ground will connect to any of the Pi's ground pins. The output can be connected to any GPIO pin. I'll use GPIO 21. Just to be safe, I'll add an optional 10K resistor in series with the output. The resistor is not required. Its only function is to limit the current flow in case of accidents, which I think is prudent when testing 5 volt components. On my breadboard, I have an LCD display hooked up with the same wiring as my last video. I'll plug the HCSR501's VCC to the 5 volt rail, which is powered by one of the Pi's 5 volt pins. I'll plug the sensor's ground pin to the ground rail, which is common to the Pi. Next, I'll plug the output pin in series with the 10K resistor and then connect the other end to GPIO 21. Again, you can use any GPIO pin. And that's all it takes in terms of hardware. Here is the Python template I used in my previous video. I'll use it as a starting point. So far, it imports and initializes the LCD and GPIO modules and sets up a main loop. Please note that I'm running idle as a root because the GPIO pins require super user access. First, I'll paste in a GPIO setup command. This will set up pin 21 as an input. I'll also turn on the pin's built-in pull-down resistor. In my previous video, we used pull-up resistors because our input switch is activated by grounding the pin. The motion sensor is the opposite scenario. It activates by taking the pin high. Therefore, we use a pull down to ensure the pin doesn't float and is pulled low when not active. Next, I paste in a callback function called motion sensor. This will be fired by an interrupt. It starts by clearing the LCD display and then checking to see if the pin is high. True equals a rising condition, which indicates the motion detector just came on. In this case, the LCD display will show that the motion is detected and it counter-tracks the number of motion events. Finally, I paste in the GPIO add event detect call, which adds a listener to pin 21. We want to catch when the motion detector activates and deactivates, so we use the both parameter to fire the interrupt on rising and falling. The callback parameter links the listener to the motion sensor function. The balance time is set to 150 milliseconds. You may have to raise this value depending on your circuit. That's all it takes in terms of software. The main program loop remains empty because everything is handled by the interrupt and the callback. Okay, let's run the program. When I place my hand in front of the sensor, the LCD display alerts to motion. The screen clears after the timeout, and again my hand fires the sensor. Now let's make one small improvement. I'd like to add an LED as a supplemental motion indicator. LEDs can be run from any GPIO pin. I'll use GPIO 20. A 100 ohm resistor is required in series to limit the current to the LED. On the breadboard, I plug in an LED. I connect the cathode to ground with a 100 ohm resistor, then I patch the anode pin to GPIO 20. On most through-hole LEDs, the anode lead is slightly longer than the cathode. This helps determine which is which. Also, it doesn't matter which side of the LED you place the resistor. As long as it's in series, it'll limit the current. Back in the Python program, I paste in a GPIO setup command to set up GPIO pin 20 as an output. Then in the callback, I paste in a GPIO output command to set the LED low or off. Then under the rising condition, I paste in an output command that turns the LED on by setting the pin high. OK, I'll save the program and run it. This time when I place my hand in front of the sensor, the LED also comes on in addition to the LCD message and goes off when the timer resets. Now let's see if something besides my hand can set off the sensor. Looks like an intruder has been detected. OK, I hope you found this video helpful. This tutorial was a request. If you want me to continue this series, just let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. 
You can support this channel by subscribing or leaving a like. Also, please check out my website, rototron.info, for more projects and information. Thanks for all the support and for watching.